People don't like who I am. And they're like, oh my god, she's so musty. I'm like, shut the f up! I don't know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, it just... <laughs> like, 10 to 15 huge panic attacks a day. Like, that's how bad it was. It's obviously still there. I obviously still struggle with it. There's no way to just, like, poof, anxiety's gone. It's very difficult to talk yourself out of anxiety. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. J.D. Amelio here, TikTok's latest superstar. Now, I'm sure by this point you have heard, either through the news, ads, or by your annoying 12-year-old cousin named Anisha about the D'Amelio sisters. Focus on school, Anisha. I saw that D in math class. Anyways, Charlie currently has around 138 million followers on TikTok, while Dixie has over 57 million. The family also has their own reality TV series on Hulu. It sheds light on the negative impact of the immense fame placed on their shoulders. Remember, Charlie is only 18 years old, while Dixie is just 20. Neither of them can legally drink or rent a car. They constantly have to deal with criticism, negative comments, and harassment from paparazzi. People often assume their lives just consist of making easy TikTok dance videos, but there's a lot of pressure behind the scenes. This is the dark side of the D'Amelios. Before I get into it, please subscribe to my channel if you like my content or enjoyed any video I ever made. For most of you, that's probably just one or two, but hey, I'll take what I can get. It would really help me out because YouTube's algorithm is constantly changing. I will never make a Patreon, so if you want to support me, please, please, please subscribe. Thank you, and now back to the video. Charlie D'Amelio grew up in Connecticut along with her sister Dixie to parents Mark and Heidi. From a young age, she danced competitively and even choreographed routines. In May 2019, she made a TikTok account and her first post was just a silly joke. Hey, did you know one out of three hoes are mad? For real? Well, I'm not mad. I'm not mad either. Hoes mad! Hoes mad! Later, she started showing off her dancing skills like in this duet which went viral. Want to do a dance challenge but don't want to spend the next week of your life learning intricate choreography? I made this for you! Here we go. Step, step, flip, flip, shoulder, shoulder, hip, hip, hands go up. Hands go down, move your booty all around. Capitalizing on the attention, she uploaded multiple videos a week, which often incorporated popular songs that caught the eyes of viewers. Charlie quickly gained traction and amassed 5 million followers in her first few months on the platform. That type of growth was absolutely insane, but she was TikTok's it girl. She was fit, beautiful, and knew how to ride trends. In December 2019, Charlie and Dixie moved into the Hype House in Los Angeles. That's when the younger D'Amelio and fellow Hype House member Lil Huddy began dating. They were shipped as TikTok's cutest couple, with Huddy being featured in many of Charlie's videos and vice versa. And while well, the interaction between the two pulled in even more fans. By May 2020, she hit an unprecedented 50 million followers. Dixie also benefited from her sibling's success and reached 22 million. Notably, she even pursued music by releasing a song called Be Happy, which currently has over 110 million views. Sadly though, a month later in April 2020, Charlie and Huddy broke up but still stayed friends. Over time, she kept growing and passed the 100 million follower mark by the end of 2020. Now while that all sounds quite fine and dandy if I may say so myself, there's an incredible hidden side behind the success most people don't know about. The type of massive exposure the D'Amelios got can sometimes be a double-edged dildo that f***s you in the ass. For example, in November 2020, the sisters were criticized for acting out of place in an episode of their family's dinner-based YouTube series. In it, Dixie vomited after eating a snail in her paella made by the family's personal chef. Interestingly, special file, sorry, I mean guest James Charles was there as well. What is this? <laughs> oh my god. It's a mushroom. No, it's not. That's a snail. It, oh my it god. It is a snail. <gasps> oh! It's a snail. It's, it's the kind of coal. It's classic in paella, and it's actually uh, an uh, omen of good luck and fortune. Mmm, yummy. See? <laughs> it sometimes happens when... <laughs> I threw up. Oh. After that, Charlie asked for dino nuggets despite the luxurious spread in front of her. Charlie, if you're picky, what's your favorite food? Chicken nuggets. Do we have any dino nuggets? Ew. To make matters worse, Charlie then mentioned she wished she hit 100 million followers a year after hitting 1 million instead of 95 million. Ugh, I wish it, I wish I had like more time. Cause imagine if I hit a hundred mil a year after hitting a mil. Was the 95 not enough for you? <laughs> well, I was just like saying like even numbers. Well, right. all right guys, thank you so much for watching um, oh, thank our you YouTube much, video. Uh, thank you so much for uh, being no. here. We're so happy that we have you guys as part of our family. Yeah, when James Charles calls you out, you know you are out of line. As a result of the situation, the sisters were dragged online for being rude and disrespectful. Dixie responded by saying it was a joke planned out behind the scenes because she often vomited. So, 
I would never in any way want to be taken as disrespectful, especially from an out of context 15 second clip. So basically my team knows I throw up a lot. I could throw up at the smell, the thought, or the taste of anything. So when they saw the snails, they were like, oh, let's get her and try to see if we can get a reaction out of her. Trisha Paytas then replied by stating it wasn't an apology. Um, this was not an apology, girl. This was not a sincere apology. You're making excuses after excuses after excuses. In addition, Charlie broke down on Instagram Live revealing she received messages that told her to go hang herself. Sorry, seeing how people reacted to this, like, I don't even know if I want to do this anymore. Like, this is messed up stuff that people are saying. Like, people telling me to hang myself, people just, like, blatantly disrespecting the fact that I'm still a human being is not okay at all. She even responded to the self-proclaimed chicken nugget Trisha by telling her to worry about herself. I'm just gonna say, Trisha Paytas, like this is not, sorry, just you have been completely rude to me multiple times, saying I, she doesn't have a personality, she can't dance, she's basic, like you have your own problems, please stop worrying about mine. Um, and that's all I have to say on that, quite honestly, I. Just, like, please stop talking about me. Honestly, the backlash the sisters received was incredibly out of proportion to their actions. I mean, the chef himself commented that the two girls were good people. Felt any type of it's way. all love, there's no problems, it's <laughs> all been a little blown out of proportion. Clearly, the public scrutinized them to an unfair degree. If you look at anyone under a microscope hard enough, you will find flaws. I mean, look at me, I'm Indian dude number 6 billion talking to a camera alone right now because I don't have any IRL friends. No one's perfect. Having the spotlight on you all the time isn't necessarily a good thing. Everyone deserves at least some level of normalcy. I can only imagine how overwhelmed the sisters must feel, especially as developing young girls. Remember, Charlie and Dixie have over 150 million followers combined, which is nearly half the population of the United States. There's a lot of people paying attention to their every move, including haters who want nothing more than for them to have a downfall. Even if it's not their fault. Side note, I know I'm a Rise and Fall channel, but trust me, I'm not one of them. Unfortunately, in March 2021, Charlie had to endure exactly that type of situation. You see, it all started when a YouTube channel called Vision predicted Charlie would die on the 12th of that month. The claim was then picked up by a fake news website which reported she passed away in a car accident. Instead of dying in a scene straight out of Nightcrawler though, Charlie posted a TikTok completely unaware of what was happening. It then got flooded with hate comments about her death. Consequently, she broke down and deleted it. So someone like predicted my death and apparently they predicted like a bunch of other people's deaths and I was supposed to die, but instead of dying, I posted a dance video. People weren't nice because they thought I was going to die. The logic doesn't make sense. I took the video of me dancing to Billy's song down because I didn't feel like dealing with what people had to say. The repeated wishes for Charlie's imminent demise when she is just a teenager trying to entertain viewers with fun TikTok dances is really uncalled for. It puts her in a pretty tough position where she almost hates the fame. I think pretty much anyone would have ridden the wave of success D'Amelio had if they were in her position. So it doesn't make sense why some people seem to despise her for it. Sadly, Charlie even mentioned she's just waiting for people to one day stop liking her. Do this and always wonder what's going to happen next or if I'm gonna wake up and everyone's gonna not like me again. Due to all the negativity D'Amelio experienced, she revealed she no longer enjoys dancing for the fun of it, which is kind of sad considering it's something she did since she was three years old. Dance used to be like the most fun thing in my life and now I don't like it. It doesn't feel good, it doesn't feel fun. Since releasing in September 2021, the D'Amelio's reality television series on Hulu has shown the intense mental anguish the sisters suffer on a daily basis. In one episode during a drive with Dixie, Charlie wondered why people were so negative. You're a 16 year old girl with emotions. They're like, oh, I'll go hang yourself, but treat people with kindness. Like, those are the people who just comment to comment. Those aren't real people. And then it's just a never ending cycle of everyone just being an asshole. Charlie then stated she was nervous to leave the house. But why are you talking in your whisper voice? Because I'm nervous. Why are you nervous? Because I'm not leaving the house. Don't be nervous. You can't control nerves. Finally, after seeing a member of the paparazzi, she had a panic attack. Dixie, I literally am about to throw up. Oh no. Oh god. Okay, we're okay, we're okay. I don't okay. want to do it, I don't want to do Charlie, it. get up. No, I don't want to do it. Well, now I'm shaking, and if I shake on camera, everyone's gonna make fun of me. We're okay. On a different episode, Charlie had another panic attack while preparing for an award show. You're shaking.
On top of everything, it appeared she had difficulty reaching out for help regarding her mental health. For example, Charlie once mentioned her own therapist told her that even though she was sad, she made his daughter happy. And we started talking about like whatever, like my emotions and stuff. And then he drops this thing. Yeah, my daughter's a huge fan of you. It was like, now how am I supposed to tell you like how, oh how I'm awkward? Cause then I was just like, oh no way. It was like, yeah, you might be like struggling, but you make my daughter really happy. And I'm like, I'm all fixed, thank you. This made her feel like she couldn't talk to anyone about her struggles. It really just isolated her more from the world. I appreciate your daughter, I really do but she's not going to help a chemical imbalance in my brain. Sorry. I also want to point out the two sisters have had serious ongoing issues with the paparazzi. For example, in February, 2022, a clip of them screaming at Dixie went viral. One big smile, one big smile, right here. And one more spot, Dixie. What's the deal? Why are you not looking? That's why. As you can see in the clip, she was visibly offended by the outrageousness of their expectations. And while in an episode of their podcast, The Two Chicks Podcast, Charlie called out paparazzi YouTubers Kevin Wong and Pap Galore for waiting outside her house. I actually have something that I would like to talk about. Something that's been grinding my gears. Uh-oh. Paparazzi. <laughs> Kevin, Josh, this is for you guys. Please stop waiting outside my house. Super weird, super uncomfortable, big invasion of privacy. Home is supposed to be a safe place, not a place where you have people waiting for you. Super weird. The two revealed they were sometimes even followed around Los Angeles. I go on drives by myself just to listen to music and like- They followed me here. No, but I like play my music really loud and super fun. And then I can't even do that because my car is like, the speakers, you can hear the music outside the car and I get embarrassed. So I like try to run away from them, but they still follow me everywhere. And I just don't get out of my car. I just drive around sometimes. After reviewing the entire situation, I personally think there's a major dark side to the success the DMLEOs have experienced. And it's not really talked about, so I wanted to shed some light on it with this video. Get it? Shed some light on the dark side? Yeah, this is why I have no friends. Okay, so obviously the sisters have benefited greatly from their TikTok fame, at least monetarily and opportunity-wise. But I mean, imagine the pressure they face to be perfect female role models. Oh, and let's not forget their parents more than likely depend on them for income. Former child actor Frankie Muniz once mentioned on Steve-O's podcast that there's a law which states only 15% of a minor's earnings has to be kept for them until they turn 18. Aaron Carter was telling us that they just like established some law that parents have to like save like 15% the Coogan law. Put it into yeah, the Coogan law. So I automatically like a check from Fox doesn't go to me. Whatever the percentage is, I, I forget what it is, goes to a trust. Like it goes right. into like an account that you can't touch until you're 18 because there's been supposedly in the past so many kid actors that right. they work and the parents spend all the money. Right. You know, and so at least they would have that maybe it's 15% or 20%. It's, it's, it's unbelievable that they, they passed a law to say that parents can only blow 85%. <laughs> yeah. That means Charlie's parents could be in control of as much as 85% of what she makes. Many people have left social media related content creation like Lily Singh, Liza Koshy, and most recently Emma Chamberlain. And all of them have discussed the massive mental toll they experienced. Charlie has already lost some of her interest in dance and could one day end up leaving TikTok altogether. I mean, there was a scene from the show where the family planned an entire year of appearances for her. That's wildly intense. On top of everything, the sisters are harassed by paparazzi and have to walk on eggshells in order to avoid being criticized by others. I think it's critical they don't lose themselves in the rat race of social media fame. Charlie is just 17 and should enjoy her teenage years instead of spending them having near constant panic attacks. I feel so bad for her and don't think she or her sister deserves the stress. Hopefully the two can rely on each other, their family, friends, and mental health professionals for support. I genuinely just want to see them succeed and hope the negativity doesn't get to them. As you can tell from this video, not everything is as glamorous as it appears on the outside. Luckily, the DMLEOs have a strong fan base and make millions happy across the world. I wish them the best. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to my channel because it really helps me out a lot. Quick plug, please follow me on Instagram at internet at J. I would really appreciate it. Thank you. See you in the next one.